Hi, I'm Wade Laszlo, and this is another long overdue version of Correction News and Views. It is August 13th, 2014. There's going to be some very important things covered in this issue. First of all, number one item will be the pension. There's a big Social Security change coming up for those of us in the correctional plan. Um, got some grievance updates, one that was won, one that's in the process. Um, some contract information about the ballots. Some schedule information and uh, something about the sheriff's candidates. So without uh, further ado, uh, let's get going. PERA, um, if you go to the site, PERA, the Public Employees Retirement Association site, if you're in the correctional plan, this is very, very, very important. This is more important than probably anything you'll be deciding on for the majority of your career. This has to do with your retirement and your Social Security, whether you want to retain it or not. In December, people in the correctional pension will be getting a ballot. And this is not coming from the union. This is going to be through the county. This is federal. This is not a union issue. This is not collective bargaining. This is federal law. Um, if you're a member of the correctional plan and you were came into it after the year 2000, this affects you. You will have the opportunity to vote whether to stay in or to opt out of contributing to Social Security. I highly recommend those of you who are in it to stay in Social Security, and these are the reasons. Um, if you opt out, you can get a refund of your Social Security, but it will only go back three years. Any other time that you were a corrections officer, Anything beyond the federal statute of limitations is gone. The refund that you get will not be the employer portion, only your portion. There will not be an increase in your para-retirement benefit, and uh, you, you will take a huge decrease in your um, Social Security benefit when you get older. Um, these, are, uh, these are the options of how the vote could go. This is very important. This is a statewide, this is going to be a statewide vote. Okay, um, there's three things that can happen. Number one, the majority of corrections officers in the plan can opt to stay in Social Security, at which thing, which point nothing changes, your Social Security, all that stuff stays exactly the same. Um, this is from Para. There can also be what's known as a divided referendum. It says what happens with the results of the divided vote. A divided vote means that each eligible voter can choose if he or she wants to continue to participate in Social Security. Anyone who votes no would have Social Security but not Medicare contributions discontinued and would be eligible for a refund of past contributions as described below. Those who vote yes would continue to pay into Social Security just as they are currently doing. Um, what happens if the voters approve continuing Social Security? Okay, I already covered that. Everything stays exactly the same as it is now. What happens if the vote fails? A majority do not want to keep Social Security coverage. This is where it gets tricky. If a majority vote referendum um, fails, then only the correctional plan members who weren't in the correctional plan before their positions were moved into the correctional plan would keep their Social Security coverage. In other words, us old farts who started back uh, under the old coordinated plan, we're good no matter what. Our Social Security is there. Those of you who came in after it, this is what would happen. All right. Um, Current correctional plan members who had Social Security deductions withheld, um, but should not have, would get a refund from the IRS. But the refund would only be for the allowable period under the federal statute of limitations, generally three previous tax years. Employers would also receive refunds of the employer contribution paid on behalf of the members um, who requested a refund. No refund of Social Security contributions would be retroactive to a date outside the federal statute of limitations. Social Security earned credits remain in place for the earning period that are outside of the statute of limitations. Former employees who had become correctional plan members after July 1, 1999 and who terminated employment during the IRS statute of limitations period would be in jeopardy of losing the Social Security coverage for that period. Individuals enrolled in Paris correctional plan from that point forward would not contribute to Social Security and of course you also would not then be collecting Social Security for those years. And Social Security is based on X amount of years. To get full Social Security, it's based on X amount of years paid into it by the time you reach retirement age. 
and uh, that would be greatly, greatly diminished if you do that. Um, next thing I'd like to move on to is a couple of grievances. We had a member that was given a seven-day suspension. Um, he grieved it. Um, it was denied at step one. We moved it to step two, and I'm happy to say that his uh, seven-day suspension was, re was reduced to a three-day suspension, and the member is happy with that, and he accepted it. Um, currently, there's another grievance that's moving to step two. We had a member that worked the Memorial Day holiday. He was at his maxed out uh, 24, day, 24 hours of banked holiday. He wanted to do holiday payout. Instead of paying him out, payroll took eight hours of his banked holiday and uh, didn't, didn't pay him the holiday that he should have. We grieved it. They returned it to his bank, paid him as he was supposed to get paid, and then promptly took it back again after the July 4th holiday. That grievance went to step one. This time it wasn't put back. Now it's moving to step two. Next, the contract ballots are out again. You should be receiving them uh, probably any day now. Probably even as you're watching this, you should be getting it. Um, as before, I am recommending a no vote. I am voting no. This is not a consensus of the stewards. This is not a recommendation by anyone else other than myself. I still think it is patently unfair that certain members um, would get a 2% market adjustment across the steps, while the vast majority of members would not. I think that our raises need to be equal across the board. We suffer together. We should get the raise together. And you've probably heard me discuss this ad nauseum. Next, the schedule. Um, as you know, certain uh, stewards have been meeting with the Sheriff's Administration on a committee. There's talks of a 12-hour day, of schedule changes. There's a lot of rhetoric flying around the air. Here's the bottom line. Sheriff Stanek, um, on one occasion before and also during the meet and greet, the Sheriff Stanek addressed our MinP members. Sheriff Stanek told our BA, Mike Golan, that he is open to 8s, 10s, and 12s. 8s, 10s, and 12s, okay? So a poll has been sent out with your uh, ballots to vote on the contract. And uh, I had it with me here, but I don't have it with me now. That's fine. Basically, the poll will give you the opportunity to check what your preference is of a schedule. Please check it. MinP needs to know what sort of schedule configuration, what sort of hours that people want. What's listed on there is the current 28-8, the 6-3, um, 8.5 hour day, 12s, 10s, and other. Fill it out, let MinP know what you want, and we can work from there. Um, and as always, as we know, as the Sheriff's Office has proven before, the Sheriff is the one who is ultimately responsible for the schedule. He can put us on whatever schedule he wants. That is labor law and that is contract. Um, right now he is currently um, interested in um, input from the union, so let's find out, let, let the union know what schedule, what sort of hours you would like to work. Um, and that moves me on to uh, the candidates, as most of you know. The candidates um, for sheriff are current sheriff incumbent uh, Rich Stanek and um, Eddie Frizzell are both running. Both of them addressed MinP at Nokio's a few weeks ago. I would encourage you to go back, watch those YouTube videos, and uh, see what the candidates have to say to you, and uh, choose accordingly. Now that brings me then to the endorsement process. Both candidates are looking for our endorsement. How does a MinP endorsement work? We're not like other unions. Um, we basically came out of the Teamsters Union. We were sick of the Teamsters um, way that they endorsed things. You had, you know, a few people sitting on a board. They made their decisions. There was usually kickbacks and other, uh, I shouldn't say kickbacks in the sense of financial, but they ended up usually sitting on the boards of people that they endorsed for even more money to pad their wallets with. We were tired of getting, you know, phone calls and glossy mailings at union expense telling us who to vote for, most of us who we could have cared less about. The way MinP endorsement works is this. It would take a vote of 70% of affected members to endorse a candidate. So what does that mean? If somebody wanted to endorse a candidate for Hennepin County Sheriff, um, whether it be Eddie Frizzell or Rich Stanek, the process would be this. A member would have to go and make the motion. The motion would have to be approved. The ballots would have to go out. It would be 70% vote, not just 70% of our bargaining unit, so it would definitely be Hennepin County Detention and Hennepin County Dispatch. It would also be Minneapolis 911, Edina PD, U of M PD, those are all within Hennepin County, and any MinP members living in Hennepin County. It would take a 70% yes vote 
to endorse. Any non-returned ballots are counted as a no vote. That's what it would take. As of this date, I haven't seen anybody put any kind of effort forward to endorse any of the candidates. Um, time's running out if you want to do that, but uh, just so you know what the process is. Once again, I'm Wade Laszlo, and this is Corrections News and Views. And uh, please, please keep up on your Social Security issues. I encourage you to vote no for the contract. And I, uh, excuse me, and I encourage you to fill out the ballot so MinPi knows what kind of schedule you would like to work. Thank you.